Hey guys, welcome back. I'm gonna make a bold prediction here. In two years, at least 80% of all new slime farms that will be built will be based on a slime farm I'm gonna show you today. The farm is really easy to build, requires no digging, supplies with a very decent amount of items, but can also be scaled up. You can get over 100,000 items per hour if you want. And what it all made possible is a classic item that has been in the game for over 10 years, the brown mushroom. What I had to do until now to build an efficient slime farm was to search for the so-called slime chunks that 10% of all chunks consist out of. Here indicated with the light green color as an overlay. And then you had to dig out the entire chunk so you could build your slime farm in there. Which especially since the 1.18 update was a lot of effort since the deep slate blocks can't be instant mined. And then you could build your farm so the slimes would spawn from the lowest layers up to around Y40, so around here. I think most players know this. Slimes can also spawn in the swamp biome. So you probably at some point wandered through a swamp at night and got attacked by a slime. So the idea is kind of obvious. That's what we're also using here, is to make a slime farm in a swamp biome. A lot of players came to the same conclusion and wanted to make such a farm over the years, but pretty much everyone realized that it's not really worth it because there were some issues before. But something has changed in 1.18. With the help of a lot of brown mushrooms, we can now make a really efficient slime farm in the swamp biome. The thing that has changed was the light level requirement for hostile mobs spawning. So until 1.18, mobs were able to spawn on top of those blocks here that have a light level of 7 or lower. So in case you have a partially lit up block like light level 2 here, mob was able to easily spawn there. Now it has changed. Mobs can now only spawn in light level 0, so where there's absolute darkness. Slime chunk based slime spawning was not affected by this change. So like before, slimes in a slime shell can spawn in any light level. The fact that you could prevent other hostile mobs from spawning in your slime chunk based slime farm just by placing down a couple light sources was the reason why this farm was so efficient compared to the swamp based slime farm. But another type of slime spawning was not affected by this light level change. So slimes, similar to the other hostile mobs in previous versions, can spawn at light level 7 or lower in the swamp biome. It's also the reason why you don't see any at daytime. So the big problem in previous versions for the swamp based slime farm was that you couldn't prevent the other hostile mobs from spawning. So for every slime you got, you got 20 other mobs like creepers, skeletons, zombies, and you somehow had to deal with them. So they wouldn't just path towards the golem. You had to either make a flushing system or something similar. And quickly your swamp based slime farm became really inefficient because 95% of the drops were in slime in the first place. And it also took quite some time until you would be able to clear the mob cap again. So obviously I don't think about swamp based slime farms all the time. There's also a reason why it took a couple months that we finally actually came up with this design. So the other day we were talking about those swamp based slime farms randomly in the discord and we were explaining to someone why the swamp based slime farm is not a good idea. And then everyone all of a sudden was, wait a minute, we can now actually prevent the other hostile mobs from spawning. Swamp based slime farm is actually viable now. So all we basically needed was the perfect block to prevent hostile mobs from spawning, but allow slime spawning. I actually suggested to use brown mushrooms and most people didn't know what I was actually talking about. I think not a lot of people know this. Brown mushrooms actually emit a light level of one, which makes it the perfect block for the swamp based slime farm. So why is the brown mushroom the perfect block? There's two requirements. It doesn't obstruct any mob spawning with a hitbox and it emits a light level of one. Another block that wouldn't obstruct any mob spawning, for example, would be Glow Lichen. Here we get light level seven and technically slimes can spawn in here. But similar to the old hostile mob spawning, a light level of seven makes it less likely for mob to spawn compared to a lower light level. So it's pretty much um, a linear function. The mobs are seven times less likely to spawn compared to light level one. So that's why we really want light level one. It prevents the normal hostile mobs from spawning, but allows a maximum of slime spawning. A couple other blocks would also emit a light level of one, like a brewing stand or a small emesis bud. But 
Yeah, the problem with those blocks is the mobs cannot spawn on top of the concrete block because yeah, it would actually collide with the Amethyst Buds or Brewing Stand's hitbox, which is not the case with the brown mushroom. You can just run through it. What makes this even more quirky is the fact that it only works with the brown mushroom. The red mushroom, on the other hand, does not emit any light. So you would get the normal hostile mob spawning as well. Only the brown mushroom enables this type of slime farm. So here are a couple more facts about the slime spawning in the swamp biome. So in general, the slimes would also spawn at daytime. The only reason why I don't see them at night in the swamp is that you have skylight level that is higher than 7. But as you can see, your farm is also working at daytime. The rate of the slime spawning is also dependent on the moon phase. So if you have a full moon, you have 100% slime spawning. So you have the most mobs in there. In case you have a gibbous moon, so one like that, you have 75% slime spawning. On the next day, so basically water moon, it's 50%. If you have a crescent moon, it's 25%. And in the case you have a new moon, no slimes at all will spawn for a full day. So your farm basically averages out over eight days. Eight days is the cycle length of the moon in Minecraft. Knowing this might be really helpful in case you, for example, are wondering why your new swamp-based slime farm is not working. It's probably just a new moon day if you don't have any slime spawning at all. Of course, you can also increase the efficiency by sleeping on days where the slime spawning is below 75%. So you could, for example, add a little daylight cycle uh, counter to this and then sleep on certain days. Would be a nice way to improve the efficiency of such a farm. Also difficulty, like easy, normal or hard, and the local difficulty plays a role when it comes to the efficiency of such a farm. So the higher your difficulty, the higher the amount of large slimes that you're getting. And of course, a large slime would spawn in here would drop more slime balls than a small one that spawns. So right now we have a local difficulty of 4.33. Basically everything over 4 yeah, is capped. So if you're at 4 or higher, you get the maximum sized slimes. So in case you're playing on hard difficulty, you will get more items per hour compared to playing a normal or even easy difficulty. The local difficulty is influenced the amount of time you spend in that chunk. I think it's capped out after about 50 hours. So in order to properly test the rates of a farm, yeah, you need to spend those 50 hours in your creative world. And then for this type of farm, you at least need to measure it for eight Minecraft days of 192,000 ticks. So it averages out. As I said, you can maybe improve the rates by sleeping. One more important thing to know about are layers at which this swamp-based slime spawning happens. So unlike with the slime chunk-based slime spawning, which happens from the lowest layer to Y40, which was the reason why I have to dig so much. The swamp based slime spawning occurs from 50 to 69. Nice. So, if you look at the farm here, it's built as high as possible. Um, yeah, here are the concrete blocks, which is the block the mobs would spawn on. If you look at the F3 menu, targeted block is at 68, and then the mushroom is at 69. If you would go one block higher, you would get zero slime spawning. So, it's important to choose this correctly. Also, you could also go lower, make, for example, a farm with multiple layers. So you can go up to Y50 with the blocked mobs would spawn on and the mushroom would be at Y51 then. In a normal Minecraft world, a small scale slime farm in a swamp biome of this size, in a lot of cases, can already compete for a chunk based slime farm. So the reason is we can choose the AFK spot a lot better. So if you would go over to our slime chunk again, we would need to AFK roughly around here, so at Y60. So all the spawning spaces at the bottom would be within reach. I also used mini hut mod to make a despawn sphere. So if I would AFK here, then mobs can spawn within this sphere. Um, so in order to get the best rates for your slime farm, you would need to make sure that no other hostile mobs could, for example, spawn here at the top. So you would need to light up everything. And additionally, you would need to make sure that no other hostile mobs could spawn in all of those caves. So this would be a lot of effort. But here with our swamp-based slime farm, we can choose the AFK spot differently. So we just go up roughly 125 blocks. That's what I chose. 
for here the slabs are at y193 and we can also make a despawn sphere here so only the only mob spawning happens is within that sphere now now if you go, go look at down at the bottom um we can see this is just barely within the mob spawning range but everything outside already doesn't allow any hostile mob spawning so i got my second account here at the top so yeah, we don't have any spawning already below the farm. You don't need to worry about caves or anything. We basically have perfect spawning conditions. And I didn't have to dig a single block. So I just chose a terrain here in the swamp where there was a lot of water. So I didn't have to do anything. So if we talk about the rates again, so we get 2600 here with the swamp based slime farm. Uh, but people probably also know if you have perfect spawning conditions, you can get 30,000 or more drops per hour with the chunk based slime farm. But if you just make your swamp based slime farm larger, you can also compete with that. So over here, we got yeah, a similar farm that is just larger. Instead of one iron golem, you just have nine in here and a just much larger spawning area. And still, if you choose this correctly, you have to go a little bit lower, but you can still get away with zero digging. You might need to place down some torches here at the bottom, make sure that no mobs can spawn directly under the farm and if you look a little bit lower yeah it's basically not really possible that there's already a cave below where the mobs can spawn also a lot of caves by the way in the swamp are now filled with water so there's also nothing to worry about yeah so this farm here produces around 18,500 drops per hour already so it can yeah very well compete with a chunk based slime farm but in case you need even more items, you can also still make this farm larger to get more drops power. So you could expand it to the side if you have a large enough swamp. You can maybe dig a little bit below and add another layer. Um, so there's definitely ways to improve the rates even further. But 18,000 slime blocks power is actually quite a decent amount. 2,000 slime blocks power. Who needs more than that? This is enough to supply a tech server. So in case you're not sold by now, I don't know anymore. By the way, it took very little effort to convince DocM to actually build this exact farm here on the Hermitcraft server. So you'll see it soon on Doc's channel. Okay, let's also talk about the farm itself. Some of the design choices are made. The end, I'm also gonna give you a tutorial on the small scale farm that I even made a little bit easier than this one here. So here with the large farm, we're using magma blocks and hopper minecarts below to pick up the items. But the farm I'm going to make a tutorial on, I was going to show that later, will only have a single hopper to pick up all the items, which makes it even cheaper and simpler. Right, so let's take a look at this one here. So I'm using magma blocks because it's quite decent to kill the slimes decently fast. And what's also pretty nice is that the iron golems themselves dish out quite some damage. So a lot of the big slimes will yeah, just be split up already by the iron golem. Same goes for the medium sized ones. Actually, most damage is probably caused by the iron golems. Yeah, then the mic up below um, just picks up the items. And here I'm actually using an old school unloader because I made this farm in 1.18 so Doc can build it on the Hermitcraft server. 1.19, of course, can use the new mic unloaders. Okay, a couple more things. On top of the farm, we're using the top slabs. So it is actually pretty nice. The slimes fit in there. And also endermen can't teleport in there and pick up the brown mushrooms. They actually do that. And in case if they would pick up a brown mushroom, then it just takes some time until a skeleton would spawn and shoot at the iron golem, they can't fight back. So that's why we're using the top slabs here. On the outside, I have a ring of slabs as well. So those are just bottom slabs. This increases the rates a little bit because we get more spawn attempts inside of the farm. It's kind of optional, helps a little bit. So in case of this design here, I think it's about 1,000 drops more you get by just placing a couple of slabs around the farm. My opinion, definitely worth it. On top, we just placed on some of the torches here. Since we built this up really high, no slimes can spawn, but it's enough to make it normal hostile mob spawning proof. As you can see here, light level one, that's enough. By the way, uh, the tinted glass here is optional. You can also make the farm cheaper if you don't have access to this type of block yet um, by just placing another block. For example, for the bottom row, you can also place stairs and you can also replace those blocks here, stairs. You just need to make sure you don't get any light coming in from the side. And on top, you can also just place slabs. All right. Uh, the only thing that you shouldn't do, so you can replace this here basically with any full block on the bottom layer because of the spawn algorithm. It's not ideal if you place, place full blocks. That's why um, the stairs are recommended.
or tinted glass, which is also fine. Here's, by the way, the version I'm going to make a tutorial on. It's a bit simpler and only requires a single hopper to pick up all the items. So you don't need any rails or minecart unloaders, etc. So it works quite similar. We got the slimes being attracted by the iron golem, but they fall into a little pit here and get flushed towards the middle of the water stream. But here we actually have powder snow that the slimes would freeze in and would be split up. So the medium sized slimes would still freeze inside and then the tiny slimes wouldn't anymore, but they're just flushed towards the middle and would then be killed by a campfire. So I think either normal campfire or soul campfire is fine. Soul campfire does twice the damage, which I don't think is actually important for the tiny slimes. Yeah, all the items are also flushed towards the middle and picked up through the campfire by a hopper. So we can just pick up all the items just with a single hopper. So that's the advantage of this one here. Downside is it takes longer to kill the slimes. So it takes a while until they freeze in there. That's also the reason why I wouldn't recommend it in case you want to make a larger farm with multiple cells. So in case you only have a single cell, the mob cap wouldn't be filled. So it's perfectly fine to do that here. But not if you have, for example, four or nine iron golems, then I would definitely yeah, recommend to the magma blocks instead and then the minecart collection. There's a small downside is that we have fewer spawning spaces because we need more blocks for the pit here. Then the campfire also emits a light level of two. So technically four of those spawning spaces here wouldn't be 100% efficient. Doesn't really matter, um, but yeah still a very viable concept. So this one here will produce 2,350 slime balls per hour. It's still a very decent amount in case you're not planning on building a huge flying machine. This should supply you with enough slime for sticky pistons, a couple slime blocks, leads, etc. So yeah, this should definitely be enough. So in case you want an even faster slime farm, you could do something like this here. So 100 by 120 for spawning layers. And we just have slime spawning here on top of the concrete blocks. And most of them would immediately get damaged by the wizard roses. So just a checkerboard pattern. Haven't added it yet in the creative world, but then you would just have a minecart collection below. You would pick up the items, put it for four layers. This way you would get 76,000 slime balls per hour. But you can even make a more efficient design is we could still make this larger in case you have a large enough swamp biome or you could make a portal based farm because the main limiting factor of this one here is actually that the mob cap is filled and a lot of the tiny slimes would fill up the mob cap. So the way to go even beyond 100k would be yeah, some design where the mobs are attracted to iron golems for example fall down uh, into a little yeah, flushing setup and get flushed into a portal and then get processed in the nether. This way you can also exceed 100k items per hour with a swamp based slime farm. But of course if you go really high end then multiple slime chunks would still make a faster farm in case that's important for you. But I think in case you're getting started or for most players in general this slime farm here should be perfect. And since I think most people will probably be fine with the small farm that's what I'm going to make the tutorial about. Okay, so let's continue with the tutorial. So the first thing you do is find a swamp biome and then a good location. So ideally you have it actually flooded with water. So the farm we're going to build has a size of 33 by 33. Make sure you have enough space for that. Next you need to gather some materials. Let's take a look at the list. So here instead of the smooth stone slab, which I used, you can use any other type of stone slab or sandstone slab. You can even use wooden ones if you want to. Maybe place down a lightning rod so it doesn't burn down. Then we need a couple of full blocks because you can only place the mushroom on top of the full blocks. Mushrooms itself, 560 of those. So you might want to maybe get some bone meal and a fortune axe and chop down some mushroom trees. Probably the best way to get it real quick. Then I'm using the stairs here. Um, you can also use more tinted glass. As I said, instead of the tinted glass, you can use more normal blocks. So it's actually optional. Powder snow. So you can just go to a um, cold biome. A mountain biome, pick it up from there, or place on some cauldrons in a biome where it snows, but then you have to wait a little bit. Then we need a couple of fences, four torches, four water buckets, actually one is enough, we get four ice blocks, one fence gate, um, one hopper, one trapdoor, doesn't need to be iron, it can be also a wooden one, and one campfire or a salt campfire. 
What's not on the list, but something you should also get would be the four iron blocks in the carved pumpkin for the iron golem. And at the end, you probably want to get up to your AFK spot. So it would be probably a good idea to bring two stacks of scaffolding. If you don't have it, you can also just fill up with dirt blocks instead. Okay, so let's start building this. You might need to chop down some trees that are in the way. So I marked out a 33 by 33 area, chop down the trees and in the inside. Okay, so let's start building. I made a little platform here at the center and storage is up to you. So I'm just gonna place down one chest but here if the hopper it begins, so this is one necessary hopper. All right, then put your campfire on top of that and then go out three blocks to each side like this and fill in a platform. It's by the way really important that the hopper here is at the right height because the rest of the farm depend on it. Um, so maybe double check relative to the water in the swamp biome, like two blocks above. But also you can open your F3 menu Look at the hopper, targeted block 64. Make sure you have that. Okay, so it should look like this. Next, we're gonna place a ring of blocks around, like that here. I'm gonna place down a fence gate on top of the campfire. We can open it. And then we can place down the powder snow buckets. So you can actually get away with only having nine. Um, but it's a little bit better if you have 25. In case you're short on powder, snow for some reason, yeah, you can get away with this as well. By the way, as a version, you, we use more campfires and more hoppers instead. Um, but I think powder snow shouldn't be too hard to get. So that's why I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna place four water sources in the corners. And that's this part. Then uh, just go up two more blocks here and complete the walls. Alright, so it should look like this. Next step is putting in the iron golem. So we need a trapdoor for the iron golem to stand on. You can use a wooden one uh, or an iron one. Disadvantage of the wooden one is that you can accidentally click it. Alright, um, then we're gonna place a fence around. It's just like this. Then to summon in the iron golem, it's gonna go up a block, do it like that. And carve pumpkin. Alright. Okay, so next step is building the spawning platform. It's actually important now to use full blocks here so we can place the mushrooms on. And of course, instead of concrete, you can use stone blocks, or just plain cobblestone or something like that. Okay, so we need to go out eight blocks for six, eight. Um, it's probably easiest if you do this on like two sides like this, or six, eight. And then you can bridge over like that and connect it. So that's one way to get get it right. Maybe do it for the other corner as well. Got eight blocks. Got eight blocks here. And connect it. Okay, and then we just fill in the rest. I can go out to smash this up with this corner. And so on, just make the, the whole platform. Okay, so the next step is to build this three wide slab platform around. Um, it's optional as I said, but I would definitely recommend to do it because you could just get more slime spawns and more items. Right, so just three wide all around. Okay, so next step is place a ring of stairs around. The other option, you can also use tinted glass if you prefer that. Alright, so it should look like this. And next you want to place either another layer of stairs on top, or if you have it, tinted glass. So it's kind of nice because you can look inside from the outside. Alright, so on top of the tinted glass, we're just gonna place some bottom slabs. It should look like this. Unfortunately, we can't place the brown mushrooms yet, because you can't place them in light level 15 or skylight level. So 13 or lower is fine. So we're just gonna place the roof on top. So technically, you can also use potsol or mycelium here and place them on it already. But then, some people might have the downside, if they wouldn't have the area flooded below, that an enderman could grab the pot soul block or something like that. Um, that is why I decided to just use normal stone or concrete blocks instead. Just gonna place the roof first and then place the mushrooms, which is also fine. More downside, need to place down a couple light sources here and there to not get attacked by hostile mobs. Okay, but anyway, so just gonna place um, a full roof of slabs. And in the center, you won't be able to place the slabs because there's the iron golem. There we just go up a block. Um, so around here, can't place any. 
they're just gonna go up go like this okay now we have a full roof it's probably a good idea to spawn proof that already so we can do that just with four torches so from the corner here we got it one two three four five blocks do that for all four corners and this way the whole platform will be lit up and normal hostel spawning will be prevented no zombies creepers etc okay then next we go back inside of the, the farm might to break a block or something like that and we can start with the mushroom placing okay so you shouldn't have huge issues with the mob spawning while placing down the mushrooms but if maybe even the slimes harass you a little bit it's also okay to maybe place down a torch in the middle to light it up at least partially uh, you can still place it at light level 12 or lower okay um you can also leave out some spots so technically you already have the campfire so on those four spots you don't need to place down mushrooms but it might be simpler just to place them anywhere all right so fill it up entirely with mushrooms okay so next we want to add the afk spot so we want to go up to 192 i think the easiest way is if we place another slab here and then scaffolding on top uh just get 120 scaffolding exactly and click it all down all right so if you're up here the targeted block would be 192. by the way there's a little bit of leeway but I'd rather i have that uh, then people building it up one block too high <laughs> and then not getting any spawns. Okay, so you can technically go up two blocks higher, but this is also fine. So if you want, you can go out maybe one more block around to a bit more safe up here. So maybe place down a torch to not get any mobs spawning. Then of course you have the phantom issue. Um, just place down maybe a slab up here. If you stand below, you don't get any phantom spawning. You can also wall yourself in if you want to just to be absolutely sure all right just fyi in case you don't know it you don't want to build a huge platform directly above the farm because it would directly affect the spawn rates of the slimes so if you can don't build anything above besides the little afk platform so don't move your storage up here uh, it might be convenient but yeah it's definitely detrimental for the spawning rates and the items you get per hour all right so we're done with building got another account here standing at the top right now and as you can see the farm is already producing a bunch of items pretty good got tons of slime in there already let's check the chest yep no, it's pretty good all right so i hope you could follow the tutorial and the farm is working for you by the way it is probably going to be one of the last tutorials i make on this channel my plan is actually to start another channel that will focus solely on tutorials we'll have another style a bit more video editing and so on just to make sure that there's no reason to get your tutorials from the content thief channels instead all right that's it for today thanks guys for watching and see you next time bye bye